in my last video, I did a, an update on how I was finding FreeBSD 15 stable. There were some caveats, and I, I forgot to mention them in that video. So we're going to go through it, the, the main caveat, the one that always trips me up and I always forget, and that is updating the bootloader <laughs> on FreeBSD. So I've updated to FreeBSD 15 stable, and it's my opinion that it just seems to be continuation of 14 stable, which is good. I'm sure there are new features. However, they're probably features that I'm not going to use just the way it is. So as you can see, I'm on stable. It's called Alpha 4 at the moment. That's the current release. And the one thing that I always forget to do this will be a really, really quick video today. The one thing I always forget to do is update in the boot code. Always forget it. And if you don't do it and you upgrade your pools, your ZFS pools or your Z pools, maybe not after the first reboot, but after one or two or maybe even three, you'll find that it no longer boots from a Z pool. Now, by default, FreeBSD installs using ZFS. You can choose not to use it and and use UFS, in which case this doesn't really matter to you. <laughs> but if you're using ZFS, you need to do this. Now, there are two ways. If you're on legacy boot, or what most people call legacy boot or legacy BIOS boot, it's a different way to what I'm doing. And I will show you how to do that as well, but we'll just do the one that I'm actually running at the moment, which is UEFI boot. And there is a way to find out which one you're using. We'll just do that so you know. There you go. So my system is using UEFI or UEFI. So we will proceed with doing this boot code update. And this is the one thing whenever I do any kind of FreeBSD update that always gets me a little nervous. But we're going to do it anyway because it's got to be done. Well, I say it's got to be done. It only really has to be done if you're updating or have updated your Z pools, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Here we go. So let's look at the top one. Some supported and requested features are not enabled on the pool. The pool can still be used, but some features are unavailable. Enable all features using Z pool upgrade. Once this is done, the pool may no longer be accessible by software that does not support the features. So it's something to bear in mind. And obviously one of those features is booting. Now you see, right there, my Z boot is the same. So let's get on and do this. Now I'm sat in my boot directory because that's where the file is. So we're going to go G. Actually, we'll just do a G part list because that'll tell you which disk and petition you need to do. Now I already know what mine is. So it's ADA zero P one. If you look, it will tell you that it's the EFI boot. That's what you're looking for. Label EFI boot zero. Type EFI. The others you can forget. There's swap. And then there is my ZFS. However, I don't really need to know which partition it is because the boot code, the, 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 the command that we're going to use will figure it out. So let's get on and do this. So we're doing EFI. So it's G part boot code minus P boot boot one dot EFI minus install or I. I think that's where we tell it which petition it is. So you do need to know your petition. Sorry about that. And as I said, it's P1. And then which disk? And there we go. It's ADA0. This is the nervous bit. Ready? Part code written. Now, once we've done that, we can actually check that it's installed it. So let's mount the, the petition. So mount minus T, MS DOS, FS, dev ADA0P1, and we'll mount it in MNT. Okay. Oh, really? It's right there, look. Come on. Strange. Why is it saying that? Okay. Interesting. <laughs> we'll check that in a minute and see if it works. Mm hmm. Okay. We'll, we'll come back to that in a bit. So let's do a shutdown. Minus R now. This is where we get nervous. Now, this system should only take a couple of minutes to reboot. So let's do that and come back to it in a couple of minutes. So it's, yeah, let's log out of it. This is the nervous part. 
Now, it is quite possible this system won't come back up. And it's why I get very nervous doing this. And what I should do is figure out a way of doing ILO. It might be helpful. Nano KVM. Hmm. That might be something to look at. How much are they? 24 pounds. Hmm. Something to think about. All right, let's see if we can get in, shall we? I'm going to go with not. Yeah, it should have been up by now. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to download some images because I've got a funny feeling I'm going to have to go and fix this. <laughs> In fact, I'll put money on it. Yeah, it's not come back up. It should have come back up. Let's bookmark this page. One more check just to make sure. Okay, there's something funny going on. The smeg was all that about. Better dead than smeg. What is going on? Right, thank you. Okay, so there's something really weird going on on my PC. It's the first time it's done that. And I don't think I even have. Oh, hello. Yeah, I don't think I even have Putty on my desktop. I should probably put that there. Anyway. So I knew this could happen, which is exactly why I downloaded uh, those images. So I'm just going to quickly burn both of them. Oh, yeah. So runner's administrator, because he's going to ask that anyway. <sighs> I did have a feeling this would happen. So we're going to that one. And we'll do... DVD as well, I think. Yeah, I think I know where it went wrong, and I will only know until I've actually gone and had a look at it. I think the reason this has gone a little bit skew if is because I mounted the UEFA petition and then unmounted it, and I think it's gone a bit funny. <laughs> So, a little bit later on, I shall go and fix it. Don't do what I did. Do the research, figure it out, and do it right first time. If not, failing that, the best thing you can do is have one of these things, not necessarily this one, but a USB key with the appropriate version of FreeBSD bootable image on it. So, in my case, 15 Alpha 4. Once you've got that, and you have physical access to that machine, which I don't have at the moment. Have a go and see what happens. I'd love to know what, what it says on, on my on my terminal, because I can't see it. But I'm guessing operating system not found. However, if I boot to one of these with the appropriate ISO, I can fix it. And I'll probably show you how I did that in another video. Mistakes happen. I'll figure it out. I'll... You know, it happens. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, share, do the whole lot. If you think you know what I've done wrong, put a comment down there. It'd be interesting to see what you guys think. What I can see is that behind me. Um, and let me know. It'd be interesting to know what you guys think. Oh, and um, don't forget to check out and visit my forum. It's going very slow, but I need you guys to pop along and, and start populating it. With that, I'm out of here. Take care. But what is this doing? Yeah, I said in the last video, I love it when things go right. Unfortunately, they don't always go right.